So the rumored Far Cry 7 leaks, what do you think? There might already be a post about this, apologize, blah, blah, blah. Lately, there have been some rumors about the setting of Far Cry 7, and this is supposed to have come from a reliable source. According to the rumors, the story will be about saving your family who have been kidnapped one by one in a non-linear setting. You can find them by gathering information in different ways. One by one, in a line, you can find them, and the enemy can, for example, give you wrong information and so on. To get to 100% game completion, you'll have to save every family member. There is also supposed to be a time limit of 72 in-game hours, which amounts to 24 hours of gaming. I'm curious what your thoughts are on this. Personally, I like that they're trying to come up with something new, but I'm very skeptical about the whole game being on a time limit. One of the things I like best about Far Cry games is the opportunity to explore and do things at your own pace. Personally, I hope this is something they choose not to implement. What do you guys think? And then they you know, also explained it on Game Rant with links to the original sources and everything. Personally, I just find it like, it's one of the things that's been frustrating for me with the discussions around, especially Ubisoft stuff, where players will directly ask for X and then they'll be offered X and immediately the, re the re like response, the knee jerk response is really, really negative. And so it's like, okay, well, what, like, what do you want? What do you really want? Do you want Ubisoft to do something really wacky and different and novel for Far Cry uh, or for some of these franchises that have gotten kind of samey? Or do you want them to just do the same thing over and over again? Because you you complain when they do the same thing over and over again, but then they try something really wacky and different, and then you're upset about that. Like, it, it's just not clear what you even really want. Um, I I just am excited to see something different. I think the the 72 hour in game timer is an interesting thing, especially if they give players the ability to just hand wave it away. If they give players the ability to ignore it, okay, cool. Like in the original Dead Rising games, you are tasked with like solving the mystery and escaping, getting all the information you need before the helicopter comes back and takes you away within the time limit. And so it's like, if you want to do that and play the canonical way, you can do that. But if you also want to just say, screw it and give up on the primary objectives in the main story, you just go dick around. Who cares? And the game's like, whatever, doesn't matter. Just go for it. Whatever you care. Uh, we don't, we don't care. Do whatever you want to do. And I, I actually think that as long as it's open to the player choosing what they want to do, I'm okay with it. As for the effect of that, I think it can actually be really, really cool because it can force the player to feel pretty stressed and motivated to figure out how to save their family quickly. And a lot of that comes down to balancing and making sure that you know certain things are timed out properly. The way that they did it in Dead Rising was that they had the schedule kind of set up. So... You might have, like, if, if this is our timeline um, through the day, maybe this is like, uh, I don't know what that was supposed to be. Maybe this is Monday at 12 a.m. And then this is Monday at 12 p.m. And then this is Tuesday, 12 a.m., et cetera, et cetera, kind of going going all the way through then this is wednesday wednesday thursday and thursday and so it goes all the way through and what they did in dead rising was that they would set up certain missions so they'd be like okay this is when the intro of the game happens and then there's another mission you do right here and then there's another mission right here and they would kind of keep it on a tight pace initially and then you reach kind of the mid game and they'll be like okay next mission will unlock once the research has been completed or once we've heard from another survivor that you have to talk to Wednesday at midnight. So you got to wait till then go do other stuff during this period and here, do whatever you want to do, make your own fun. Same thing with here. Maybe after you complete that objective, it's like, okay, Thursday at midnight, you'll hear from the contact again. And so you have that all this time to just fill in and make your own fun. So for Far Cry, it could be a similar thing where the start of the game is very, very tight and it has you on strict objectives bouncing between them and then it opens up and it's like okay fill in the gaps of time do what you need to do it's okay we'll leave it kind of open and so you can kind of meander do whatever you want objective meander do whatever you want objective and then you kind of make your own fun in between and then you know if at any point you want to just ignore one of these uh objectives you know they could put it there but you could still just totally bypass it and go completely off course and then you fail the the main story and you miss out on all of this stuff but who cares you're doing your own thing you're going off in your own path so what's what's the harm so i think it's an interesting idea i think it could work well it, it is at the very least different which is what people have been asking for so i'm down for that 
Um, I'm hoping, you know, beyond that, they also are giving them plenty of time. They're giving the developers seemingly plenty of time to work on it. Far Cry 6 released in October of 2021. It's crazy to think that that's two and a half years ago. We're approaching three years ago. And for Ubisoft, that's a pretty good amount of time because Far Cry 5 was in 2018. Far Cry Primal was 2016. Far Cry 4 was 2014. Far Cry 3 was 2012, 2013. So they are usually on a two to three year release schedule and now they're taking going on three years rumors are it's probably releasing next year so they'll be at three and a half to four years by the time we see it so hopefully that just means they're giving them plenty of time to really do something different and novel and you know i've we've done the stream clips before suggesting maybe this is the year that ubisoft starts to turn it around i know of course we've got the memes of skull and bones that was always gonna suck because it was in development hell for so long but um maybe with star wars outlaws and assassin's creed red they could actually drop two bangers that sell well uh, back to back through this year. And that could actually start maybe a renaissance, fingers crossed, for Ubisoft. Is that likely? I mean, let's just say we've been burned before. <laughs> so maybe don't get your hopes up. But it is technically a possibility, I think. I think it could maybe possibly happen. Maybe. <laughs> so there's an opportunity for that to possibly maybe sort of possibly happen ac fans got tired of the formula so they switched it up with ac origins now fans want them to go back to the old style of ac yeah it's always going to be the grass is greener on the other side um it's always going to be like that i think ubisoft has probably realized that they can they have two factions of players at this point they have this the half that are really into the open world like RPG type games. And then they have another group that is into the old school. So they have kind of half and half. And the old school gamers are fans of like AC Unity, of AC Syndicate, of Mirage, and those games. And then they have this other group that's into Origins, Odyssey, and Valhalla. And what they've realized is that they can appeal to both players and both player bases and leave them both happy if they can provide solid games that specialize in each of those. And that's seemingly what they're doing. They have Mirage, and then they'll have, uh, you know, uh, AC Red, which is going to be the big RPG as far as we can tell. And then they're going to have uh, Assassin's Creed Hexe, or codename Hexe, which is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be a little darker, potentially more like linear narrative. And then they are seemingly greenlighting um, the team behind Assassin's Creed Mirage, which is Ubisoft Bordeaux. They're going to be greenlighting them to go and make their own standalone specialized in stealth assassin's creed game so not just mirage where like it's valhalla's tool set but just reworked it's basically just a big dlc they're potentially or at this point they're getting greenlit to make their own thing from the ground up which is awesome to see and hopefully that that actually uh hopefully that actually leads to something really tangible the other studio that's kind of everybody's sleeping on right now is of course cd project red everybody's kind of forgetting about them because they did phantom liberty which was huge and everything but they are moving on to their next couple of projects they've hired a butt ton of people for them and there's a real possibility that later this year or early next year we could start to see trailers for the next witcher game which is blowing my brain but uh, that's a very real possibility. So buckle up. He took my thing. <laughs>